Hi guys, you're welcome back to my YouTube channel, Trevor Asi Dali. Thank you guys so much for clicking once again. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And to all my OGs, you know what to do. Comment down below. Let me know, gang, gang. Once again, thank you guys so much for sticking around. We've been on a row, and um, this is the last of this series that um, focuses on um, the last address that the uh, Minister for um, Immigration did, Mark Miller, in conjunction with the Minister for Employment, Minister Randy Bosinvolt. Okay, so this particular video, we're going to be looking at the last aspects that they discussed um still to summarize some of the things they had said for those of you that are just joining um first of all i have to state that they just did express entry draw um just recently i think as recent as a few hours ago which was yesterday um monday express entry draw the numbers are still high um, for those of you that are looking to come in via expre express entry, please check it out. I think that most people are just within the 480 to 500 mark, but still we are at 524. They called 1,980 persons. Um, this particular video is for those that do not fall in this category and are looking for other ways or answers per se. Answers as to how they can also further their dream of moving to Canada, okay? So the first aspect, um, I'm going to be playing some clips by the Minister um, for Employment so that we can check out, you know, the exact places where they are going to be holding back some things as concern concerning the temporary residence restrictions and cap, okay? So watch these videos and let's discuss. We're actually seeing signs that Canadian and permanent resident workers are eager to find jobs to help make ends meet. And seeing this change, we know it's now time to ease our reliance on foreign workers and begin ramping down certain temporary measures that we put in place in 2022. So as of May 1st, the first change that we are implementing is reducing the amount of temporary foreign workers entering Canada in certain sectors. All employers identified in the 2022 Workforce Solution Roadmap will have a reduction from 30% to 20% of their workforce come in through the temporary foreign worker program under the low wage stream. Now, the exception to what I just said is for the construction and healthcare sectors, as Minister Miller outlined, these are areas that have uh, critical labor shortages. And with the ambition that our government has for building 2.5 million homes over the next 10 years, we need to have every single worker we can in the construction sector and to make sure that our healthcare sector has the workers it needs. That exemption will be in place for occupations in the healthcare sector. In key sectors facing labor shortages, construction and healthcare, employers will continue to be allowed to hire up to 30% of the workforce through the low wage stream of the temporary foreign worker program until at least August 31 of this year. As the needs of our economy and workforce change, so do the measures and the policies we need to implement to ensure the greatest access and opportunities for employers and workers. Now, since these are temporary measures, we will continue to monitor and adapt to current conditions. For agriculture sector employees, employers that meet all of the labor market impact assessment requirements, their cap exemption remains unchanged. This does not affect agriculture sector employers or their workers. Other sectors experiencing seasonal demand, like in fishing and seafood, food processing and tourism, will continue to benefit from a one time a year seasonal cap exemption for work duration up to 270 days as we introduced in 2022. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Like the first one to summarize, he said from March 1st, the reduction will be in effect for the temporary residents and that's going from 30% to 20%. So this um, particular cap, we're exempting those that are in healthcare and construction. Please, if you're in construction, um, in terms of, let's say, maybe back home, you're into bricklaying, welding and the rest of them. Those are areas where you may need to focus because these people still have um, options to bring in as much workers as possible understand that their own is actually till august 31st you understand so they have longer time um the government said they will continue to monitor for agriculture they are not um, affected because we have those that brought in foreign farmers and the rest to help with agriculture you know that in this country we just have a timeline you know when winter comes before winter we need a lot of farmers to go into these massive massive fields to harvest you know and so they they also need workers 
and the government is saying their own is not capped the next one that they capped is seasonal jobs let's say farming and fishing you know when winter comes you might not be fishing as much um tourism when winter comes people cannot go for mountain climbing and the rest all those um kind of um tour um, packages and all of that so those workers will also have their one year permits um one time a year 270 days permit duration the second and most important part is that LMIA duration is now 6 months and not 12 months. If you have an LMIA, you can score extra 50 points on your express entry. But you actually need the work permit if you're going to be staying longer than that. Why this is important is because you can also score extra on um, an experience having worked here for like one year. That's why people used to have LMIAs work for one year and some LMIAs were for 18 months, some LMIAs were for 9 months. So the right now is for just 6 months and even as it's for 6 months, please, please, please make sure you've done your IELTS and West because there are people that have not done any of them and they wait till the final moment. That's why there are lots of students with expiring work permits, expiring this, expiring that because when you were coming out of school, you felt like, oh my God, I have three years. The draws were really, really low back then. There were people that did not write your IELTS, do your worst. You refused. You say, after all, I have three years. Three years is a long time. See how fast things have been changing. Imagine if when you were still in school, you did your IELTS, did your worst, you entered the pool. No matter how low your score was, COVID came and they took everybody that was in the pool as long as you were inside Canada. So, yes, those things are very important for you to do. Make sure that you have your IELTS and your worst, okay? And the next one is the purpose. Of course, the purpose of the LMIA he stated there is for employers to show that they need a foreign worker and they will confirm that they have checked Canadian um, citizens, they've checked PRO and they were not able to. This is new address. He now added some seg um, some um, different groups. Asylum seekers are now to be considered before foreign workers. Um, on underrepresented groups are to be considered before foreign workers. A lot of people have different things to say, especially because students are not even foreign workers. They're like, like, oh yeah, if you have your work permit, you're a foreign worker, but they're like temporary residents. So we are talking of people that spent money that are here. Those ones are not like first priority to asylum seekers or they're not first priority to the underrepresented groups, okay? The government is saying those ones should be um, given first, first um, point of refusal before the rest of them, as long as they have a valid work permit. And he's saying that temporary foreign program is the last resort. The reason why students have to look for LMIAs is mainly because they probably need to have a pathway to get to, you know, PRO or a pathway to stay back. When you get LMIA, you can now apply for work permit. You know, is that LMIA that you can use to apply for work permit? So even if it comes down to six months, make sure that within that your duration, you've applied for work permit extension or a work permit, depending on the um, this thing. If you use the LMIA that gave you, probably a company that gave you the work permit and apply for the work permit, you might have a closed work permit. So your work permit can just be for that particular company or that particular region or that particular uh, category of job. You can't do anything outside that. So you have to be sure the kind of LMIA you're going for. There are many things that are unfolding. And like I said, it's not even set in stone because I can say to the, everything I'm saying today, tomorrow they will change the law. Okay. I'm going to be playing a particular clip where Mila also pointed out something that is very important for those of you that are in Canada and outside Canada because this is where they are looking at next. Let's know what is going to be happening for the next three to four months right here in Canada, okay? It makes sense. Is There are two ways to control the number of temporary residents in this country. It is input and output. In terms of the input, there are things we control and things we don't control. And in terms of output, that is where provinces and, and Canada can select people to become permanent residents and look for more domestic draws, which actually makes sense because you're not affecting the cost of shelter as much as you would with a new entrant to the economy. And you're actually being more efficient in the way you are doing levels. For example, we, we currently are at four as a target for this year, well over 480,000 permanent residents. Do all those people come from abroad? The answer is no, resoundingly, but perhaps we need to look in more depth at the domestic ways in which we draw people to permanent residency, and I think that makes eminent sense because those people uh, have a beginning of integration in this country, have a job, have a house, and it's something that attacks the affordability challenge right on by making sure that we are being reasonable in the levels that, of temporary foreign work that we have and temporary residents in this country. Asking our own departments but also 
our provincial and territorial counterparts is when they have the responsibility of selecting individuals to take that step further and start looking at the domestic pool that already increases. Take for example the very large pool of international students with postgraduate work permits that are perhaps underemployed or not employed at all. This is a young cohort of the population that has spent a number of years here so is on the path to integration that perhaps has a pathway to permanent residency knowing that they're not necessarily entitled to it in the first place. So just to look at the people that are here temporarily. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts. Miller pointed out that provinces need to do more domestic draws. So now I believe strongly that they want to start looking inwards. This is going to be good news for those that are in Canada and bad news for those that are not in Canada yet. Um, he said, because we already have additional pressure, we already have a lot of pressure on accommodation, healthcare, and the rest of them. Instead of complaining that we're having all this problem and then employers are still looking for, for um, labor, why not look for labor within the people that already have houses, already know the system, already know their way around Canada? That's what he's saying. These people are already situated. So um, um, people are speculating that CEC draws may return. This is Canadian experience class. There used to be draws back to back like this. It has not been in effect for a while. Some people are saying, okay, now that provinces are, might be giving targeted PMP, you know, they'll be having specific categories of um, of candidates that they are looking for. Um, the, the minister also announced that, we, that this year they're looking at 480,000 people to come in as PRE. You know that there was a year that they had about, was it 500 and something or so? Really high. But this year it's low, but it's not like that bad. Let's say each province out of the 10 provinces, each one gets 48,000 people. 48,000 is not so much of a large number. If they give you your cap of only 48,000, these provinces will now be forced to say, okay, inside this 48,000, I need more healthcare. I need more accountants. I need more. So they will not have specific PMP draws. Please put your ears down because for me, if I would advise, if you're not in Canada yet, make sure you've done your West and you've done your IELTS. Maybe look forward to doing additional masters or whatever to stand a better chance, but be in the pool so that if any of these um, provinces start doing nomination based on specific categories that maybe you fall into, you can be able to apply for it, okay? Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. So this is something that I speculate that um, they might now have some sort of a pathway for students. If they, tr if they do that, that would be nice. A pathway for students that want to that have worked and want to remain but you know that they keep saying that um that is not the reason that they give study visas they don't want students to feel like coming into canada is a way for them that they must stay and get pr so i do not know if they will outrightly call it a pathway for students they may however call it a pathway for those that have worked in canada and live in Canada. So it might be a pathway that benefits students, but they will not outrightly call it a pathway for students. So um, students can also um, cross their fingers and just hope for the best. Right now, it is looking like a lot of areas are closing up. Um, some people, their, their, their um, hope was um, LMIA. What the Minister of Employment is saying is that bringing in a worker should be the last resort. So for, for people that called, you know, some people used to send messages like, what are the kind of jobs I can get from outside Canada? Um, right now, honestly speaking, it's going to be very tight. Before, there used to be provinces like Nova Scotia, Newfoundland and Labrador that, that do employment recruitment outside Canada, you know, look at other places. Right now, with this announcement that the employment minister is making, they are forcing them to look inwards inside Canada. Um, I do not know if they will still be going out, you know, to do this, their recruitment, probably for targeted places that Canadians do not, because Canadians, not everybody wants to go to Newfoundland, but people, people outside Canada don't mind. So unless maybe the province or the government can do a pathway and say, okay, healthcare workers or students that are in healthcare or recent graduates of healthcare um, courses, if you want to go to Nova Scotia or if you want to go to Newfoundland, if you want to go there for the next three years, there's a um, PR pathway for you. Maybe the first 10,000 people. That way you have people that are going there to populate the um, province. You can do the same and take them to uh, Manitoba. You can do the same. That way you can even decongest Ontario. There are other ways that the government can come up with schemes that will encourage people to move to other provinces, northern territories, Atlantic provinces, to be able to, you know, um, settle down in those areas. That way, the provinces are not forced to go and do um, outside recruitment. And then people within Canada know, they know for a fact that if I'm going there, since the province asks for 500, they have 500 jobs, you understand? So 
guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section that is the update right now and it seems like yeah most times we come we have different different types of shocking news and all of that this is just among the things he said and like i said most times when they do the address they speak english and they speak in uh, french so it's always hard for people to go around it understand it break down you know i've done a couple of videos concerning this address but the more we talk amongst ourselves i read up on people's vlogs and watch videos i begin to understand this um, announcement a lot better we are still waiting for other provinces to hop on and start doing their attestation especially ontario everybody's waiting for ontario because they are the the reason why this um, particular cap for students was put into effect if you're looking to be a student i'm sure that you already know that september is already fully booked so anybody that wants to come here as a student probably is next year you're looking at unless for specific schools that are not in the um, hot cake regions okay so please be very proactive thank you so much for watching if you have any questions let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you have answers to those questions please do well to answer them um i i'll try my best to go around and answer questions as much as possible thank you so much for watching i'm your girl acid darling please check out my other videos and i'll see you in my next one bye guys mm -hmm.